Uh, hello guys, it's me, the Tank Index here, and today I'm going to be talking about the first Russian tanks ever starting our playlist into Russian slash Soviet tanks because, well, I'm not willing to make two playlists for uh, two countries that are just different iterations of each other. So on one hand, we have the Vezdekod, which we'll be examining first, and then the Mendeleev. Um, these are two very different tanks, and I expect a lot of mispronunciations because, well, it's Russia. So starting off with the Vezdekod. Um, in August 1914, so a month after World War One started, 23-year-old aircraft designer Alexander Porokovstikov proposed an all-terrain vehicle to the Russian Empire. In Riga, which is now part of Latvia, he had come up with a design for a fighting vehicle with cross-country capability, which was perfect for the Eastern Front. Because unlike the constant trenches of the West, the Eastern Front was much more of war of movement, moving a lot more through the snowy... Um, um, less muddy, crater-filled uh, plains of Russia, so, which was absolutely perfect for his design. The design was finished mid-January 1915, and on 13th, the project was approved and put under the supervision of Colonel Pokolov, Poklevsky Kozelo. Um, the Vezdokod, which literally translates to anywhere goer, would have been had one large track underneath the vehicle, having steering wheels up on the top that would sort of bend down, to actually steer the vehicle, it would th those would theoretically turn the vehicle via the driver having a steering wheel. A 10 horsepower engine propelled the vehicle at a reported 40 first. Yeah, Russian has its own system as well, just like America, or 26 miles an hour, which would be extremely fast for even the lightest World War One tanks. Um, the reports of the vehicle are really interesting and surprisingly positive. Reports read. Um, it appears that Vezdokod is a sound and practical idea. It can achieve a speed of 25 verst an hour, 60 point f or 60.57 miles an hour, which is actually more than the original report said. Um, in addition, Vezdokod can ascend a slope of 40 degrees inclination, cross its trench 3 meters wide, and a vertical obstacle of 3 quarter meter. All significant holes and rough surfaces were crossed whenever tests were carried out. Vezdekod steers easily during fast motion and turns very satisfactory. In all, Vezdekod crosses terrain and obstacles impassable to conventional motor vehicles. And this seemingly showed that the Russians loved the vehicle concept and that was a, it was effective. However, things were not what they seemed and there were problems. The steering wheels on the front were so ineffective that the vehicle couldn't turn at times, despite what the report actually said. Um, and industrial resources were running ever lower in the Russian Empire as most of them were in the west instead of the safety of the east. Which meant that, um, you know, making and producing a vehicle right like this, which this would need a lot of new parts and whole factories dedicated to building large numbers of them. Which was becoming a lot harder with workers rebelling for the incoming Russian Revolution. Um, industrial focus would rather be sent on aircraft and faster, cheaper armored cars that also require less new parts. You could just take a, a bunch of cars that you had, you know, put armor on them, slap a turret on the top, and bam, you got just have an armored car, and they were a lot cheaper than the Vezdekod as well. Um, the original blueprint and most photographs have been unfortunately lost of time, likely due to the Russian Revolution. It's designer Borokovsky Kov argued that the Vezdekod was actually the first true tank rather than the British landships. An idea that Soviet propaganda would actually promote. Uh, you can see this picture from a Soviet magazine in the 1970s that where it was basically like, yeah, nah, bro, we made that shit. And now onto the Mendeleev tank. This is not a real picture, unfortunately. This vehicle is never built. Though, if this thing survived modern day, I'd buy a ticket just to Russia to see it. Um, the initial design is expected to go back to 1898, which is insanely old, around the time of the first armored car, the Sims War Wagon. However, due to a lack of f funding or support, it was never actually constructed. The design was worked upon in 1911 with new technology and presented in 1916. Designed by Mendeleev, it remained a series of plans designed and drawings. The designer was actually the son of Dmitry Mendeleev, creator of the modern periodic table, and um, he was actually working at a naval academy when he made the design. He imagined what this would essentially be a giant landship that could sustain enemy any enemy fire and be a giant mobile artillery platform. This is a 120 millimeter naval cavet gun. It is humongous. Though surprisingly, you would only have an eight-man crew inside this thing. 
uh, compare that to the K-Value unit, well, this is, thing is looking like a pretty crazy land chip. The design was completely rectangular, not a curve inside apart from the turret, with a massive 120mm kind of naval gun in the front, which would carry 51 shells, a caliber greater than any even World War II gun, much less a World War I gun, able to be a mobile artillery platform, it could fire anything, the top turret had a machine gun along with great viewing platform. The machine gun could also be removed if unnecessary, so even better to view things with. The armament was insanely advanced for its time, and it would serve as a mobile artillery platform brilliantly if it could actually be produced. Um, in comparison, even in modern day, 130mm is con considered basically the up and front great uh, gun for your main battle tank of the military. So this thing would be... If this was in a 1v1 with a tank and they were just moving still each other, the guns could pierce each other, which was really showing how advanced the cannon was. For a tank design at time, at least. The heavy steel armor plating was similar to battleships of the time. Um, obviously, about half as less, but still insanely impressive as an actual... I mean, yeah, it would be half as big as a dreadnought, to say, but it would still be insanely impressive compared to tanks. It would have 150mm frontal and 100mm side. In reference to the Tiger II, which during World War II was a gigantic tank to the people fighting in it, had 150mm frontal armor. However, fault of this was its insane weight of 173.2 tons, rivaling the mouse design. And I mean, that thing's still standing, I believe, though it's a Frankenstein of combined parts from cyber models. In reference, SMS Breslau, a German cruiser had up to 100 millimeter armor launched in 1911. This tank had more armor than some ar cruisers, which is pretty insane. The, propul the propulsion of the tank was also advanced with a continuous track and the pneumatic piston suspension. It had a submarine 250 horsepower petrol gasoline engine, which could theoretically go nearly 15 miles an hour, though as you can imagine, it would face insane breakdowns. Though, if you if it doesn't face breakdowns, then it could traverse basically any terrain, um, guarding of course that it wouldn't sink into the ground from the weight. Now, final test of the two tanks. These original tank designs of the Russian Empire are absolutely fascinating and show two completely different tank concepts. The Vezdikov concept is more similar to a whippet. It's a light, small, armored vehicle get back at spearhead results and move quickly through various terrain. Armed with a machine gun, it can ther theoretically move at a respectable speed, especially in the lesser trench-filled frozen plains of Russia. Meanwhile, the Mendeleev tank was far different. More so following the landship concepts the British and Germans adopted, it is quite literally a landship. It was literally designed as a land ship. Even more of a landship than the K-Wagen, it had literal battleship-grade armor and a heavy naval gun that could probably literally blow fortresses and bunkers apart, much less trenches. The two tanks each, while fine in concept, would be completely ineffective to produce and or use in the eventual world war. The Vezdakod um, just wasn't up to snuff to fight, and, you know, a lot of resources would be made in producing this t that vehicle in Russia, especially with the limited industrial base. And the limited industrial base made the Mendeleev tank, even one of them, would be insane to make. Um, and, you know, using it, the Mendeleev tank, artillery bar barrage, it really wouldn't be able to actually dodge him. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, and this is going to be the tank index out. See you next time on the video on the Tsar tank. Yes, I'm just as excited to talk about that giant tricycle as you are.